G'day guys, it's Wolfie here and welcome back to the channel. So, it's happened finally. Engine swaps are now viable in GT7. So that's awesome news guys. I've been reluctant to actually uh, share a lot of my engine swap tunes in the past because I was concerned that people wouldn't be able to access them. People would be able to get the engine to actually use the tune. So um, yeah, now that you guys are able to do it, I thought I'd try one out with uh, the Mazda 3. And of course, we've gone the 787B engine in it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do, please like and subscribe. Okay, so the Mazda 3 is currently available, it was always available at the Mazda dealership of course, and is only 37,000 credits, so that's the cheaper part of this build. Unfortunately, the 787B engine, not quite so. But once you've got the car, you want to head into GT Auto and you want to get the wide body and the engine swap. As you can see, I've already done them. So we're going with racing hard tires, front and rear. We've got the fully customizable suspension set to 115 at the front, 117 at the rear. Anti roll bar is set to 7 at the front and 7 at the rear. Dampening ratio compression is set to 35 at the uh, 36 at the front and 36 at the rear. Expansion is set to 47 at the front, 46 at the rear. Natural frequency is at 2.0 at the front and 2.10 at the rear. Negative camber is at 2.2 at the front and 1.8 at the rear. I tried to keep that sort of down a little bit because it's only going to increase the tyre wear and this thing's four wheel drive. So we don't want to wear out those front tyres too much. You can even drop it a little bit if you feel like that works better for you. Now it's the same with the toe angle. I've gone for zero toe angle on the front, um, which hampers just slightly, but it also means that those front tyres are going to last a bit longer. And as for the rear, there's not a whole lot on it. So that's set to 0.13. Uh, and yeah, that's inward. So to the right hand side. We've got the fully customizable differential. And the initial torque is set to 5 at the front and 10 at the rear. Acceleration sensitivity is set to 10 at the front and 30 at the rear. Braking sensitivity is set to 15 at the front and 25 at the rear. And we have the torque vectoring center differential, and that's set to 30-70 split. So the good thing about this is, especially when it rains, you can change it to 50-50, and you've got full four-wheel drive, front and rear, and it's going to just stop you from spinning out, help you get around those corners, and just give you a lot more control over the car. But you don't want to be using it too much in the dry, because it's going to wear out those front tires once again. So I'll keep that at around 30-70 split. And during rainy sessions, I'll put it on the 50-50. So as for downforce, we've gone with 57 at the front and 250 at the rear. So a lot at the rear, not a whole bunch at the front. Uh, you're going to feel that rear downforce, but it's only going to help under speed. So ECU is fully customizable and at 100%. We've got 182 kilos worth of ballast. And we've offset that by weight reduction. And we've pushed that slightly back at 17. So that's also going to put some weight over the rear tyres and help with our acceleration. Power restrictor is set to 94%. So almost full power out of this thing, which is just crazy. And we have the fully customizable manual transmission. And I've set that to 260, that's kilometres per hour. Um, you might want to play around with that if you think it works out for you. This is my first go at it, so... I'm going to uh, refine a little bit and try changing around these gear ratios and see what works. We've gone with the high RPM turbo. It's the only one that's available for this engine, unfortunately. Brake system is carbon and brake pads are racing. Now, I always grab the handbrake. It just helps if you get stuck and you're approaching a wall and you need to slide the rear end out. And same with the brake controller. Uh, that comes down to personal preference. But I set mine slightly forward for a lot of builds. Clutch and flywheel is racing, and I've used the um, carbon propeller shaft, uh, and for some reason or another, it seems to actually drop my PP. So I'm not sure, entirely sure why that is, but uh, hey, I'll take it. And as I was saying, uh, with the weight reduction, uh, that's going to offset the additional weight that I've added to the car and put to the back to make it a little bit faster. And we've also got the increased body rigidity. So there you go. Now just make sure before you start this 
race guys that you've got the racing intermediate and heavyweight tyres because we are going to Le Mans for the SAF WTC 700 event. Okay, so I was basically just trying to uh, work out, you know, where I was going to be able to really power around this course and where I was going to have to try and take it easy. Obviously, some of the corners, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to get around quickly. Uh, Maneuverability is a slight issue um, because you've got to take slightly wider lines through a lot of the course. But obviously, when you get onto the straight, as you can see, you can just absolutely power past everyone. Uh, and you can rev the guts out of this thing. And the good thing is you don't have to worry about fuel. You're easily going to get three laps on fuel map one. Um, possibly even four if you short shift. If you fuel save just a little bit. Or if you put your fuel map down. So, yeah. The uh, top speed and acceleration was never going to be in question. Uh, however, I was just trying to work out where I was going to be able to what sort of corners and what sort of angles I was going to be able to take through corners and surprisingly enough the braking wasn't even that bad I could pull up really quickly um, and it wasn't that bad braking around and into corners you just have to be a little bit tentative especially through the S's here um, as you can see you've got to sort of slow right down there's a little bit of understeer so uh, it might be worth just using a bit of rear brake bias to help you slide that rear end around a little bit uh, and as you can see there I've gone over the white lines so you just want to be careful of that because you're going to get one of these so yeah 3 minutes 55 that wasn't too bad I was pretty impressed with the sort of pace that I was getting out of it and obviously I knew it was going to be quick uh, what was going to be the more interesting part was how it was going to hold up under wet conditions so consistent 4 minute laps is quite easy in this thing I'm by no means super fast and um, I wasn't even really uh, giving it all the beans on this one but uh, after lap 3 I've come in and changed my tyres because as you can see there the fronts are getting a little bit worn out and that's what I was talking about using wet tyres in dry conditions it's really going to wear the front tyres in a four wheel drive car so I had to just be careful of that now it looked like there might have been rain sort of sneaking in, but it didn't quite eventuate. So I was just plugging away at it and actually kind of hoping that it would get rain because I wanted an opportunity to just try this thing out in the wet. But for the meantime, I was just happy to try and get my lap times down and see how quick I could get it. And I think now that I'm getting a little bit more used to the car, I could honestly do sort of 3 minute 50s in this car quite easily. And uh, once I refine the tune a little bit more, I think it'll be, you know, even faster than that. So, yeah, it's uh, sky's the limit with this one, I think. And as you can see there, lap five, I noticed the rain starting to come in, and it got a bit dicey. So, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I've, uh, I'm going to have to change over onto the wets. So I come in, end of lap five, and as you can see there, I've put a little bit of traction control on now. And I've also changed that center differential to a 50-50 split. So that I've got all four wheels driving an equal amount. And it's just going to help me throughout the corners and stop the rear end from sliding out under acceleration. And I was actually pleasantly surprised with this. Uh, I had to be, I was pretty tentative. I didn't know quite what to expect. And, you know, with this engine, it's a frighteningly powerful engine. And, um... Yeah, I was a little bit concerned about sliding out, but it really wasn't that much of an issue. So the four-wheel drive is just amazing. It's so good to be able to combo the 787B engine with, you know, a four-wheel drive car, especially something small and nimble like this. So, I uh, yeah, by, by about lap six, so one or two laps into the rainy part of the race, I was discovering that you could actually, you know, you could really give this thing the beans around the course. You just have to be a little bit careful around sections like this. You know, I'm crossing over lines and I wanted to be uh, a little bit careful about uh, going over curbs and stuff like that, obviously. There's a good chance of it sliding out. But uh, that, that didn't happen. So, I uh, yeah, I think this is something that it's, it's going to be a work in progress. You know, this is only my first go at tuning this thing. But uh, I think it's really got some promise. So, I would basically 
be overtaking back markers by you know the start of lap seven um and since i had it on uh difficulty medium that's pretty good i think you know and i got past most of the field so lap to the entire field almost um by the end of the final lap as you can see here i'm coming up past 12 uh, I think 10th, 11th, 8th, 9th, I think I got up to uh, P6, I think I lapped P6 or got close to it. And uh, yeah, not just that, I got to the end of lap 7 and still had time on the clock, so I actually had to wait. So that's, that's pretty good, there's only been a couple of cars that I've had to do that with. So there you go, as you can see I've still got 15 seconds on the clock by the time I get to the line and I've just done seven laps so we'll cross the finish line for a 30 minute race with seven laps fastest lap was four minutes and one that was the fastest uh, lap that was counted obviously the first one isn't counted so there you go guys I hope you have fun with this one and uh, if you do please uh, drop me a message and just let me know uh, what you think or if you've got any ideas anyways I can fix it I'm always uh, you know, looking for good con constructive criticism or if anyone can improve on it, you know, I'd really like to know. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Go out and make a mint and uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you liked the content and if you'd like to see some more in the future. Okay, until next time guys, take care.